Hello and welcome. For this video, I'm going to go over the tile system for a game we're working on called Warboard Tactics. The game is originally based on Advanced Wars and it shares a lot of common themes. So let's get into it. I started this project off with a multiplayer base that I made a while ago. I do have a video on that if you're interested in trying out multiplayer with Steam functionality. So the next step for me was to make the grid. This kind of grid. Knowing that the game will need a map maker, it was a perfect place to start. Allowing players to make a map is a great function to have, but it's also an extremely useful dev tool. Once I was able to add tiles, I now needed those tiles to align properly. This ended up being a fairly complex system. I know there are add-ons to Unity for this, but I really wanted to be able to have all the freedoms of a self-written program, since the game is still being hashed out. As you can see in this example, the tiles do not really know where they're supposed to go. After a bit of playing around with it, I finally, you know, fine-tuned the formula so that tiles placed actually do what they're supposed to and align properly. And you can see the shorelines are where they're supposed to be, and you know, until that happens, and then you're like, well, shoot. Uh, so uh, <laughs> get back to work, I guess. All right, so here's the breakdown. For each tile, there is an array of sockets that the tile is required to meet to even be considered as an option. It is easiest to explain with paths since they were the easiest to program, but the system works out which tile needs to be active to fit in which situation. So when a dynamic tile is placed, it grabs all of its neighbors, nine including the tile itself, as an array and it tests it against all of the other socket arrays until it finds the best match and returns that value. So in this situation, if I place another path here, it will connect with the path going up and down because there is a six above it and there is a six below it, which is just the path. In the array, you can see I just put zeros. That means anything can be there, but it requires a path to be above and below it. I'm not sure how other games have done it, but this way works extremely well for me, and I'm able to apply add-ons to the tile like these little corner nubs. See, the amount of combinations would require a huge number of tile images, so I separated the corners and placed them after the correct tile has been selected. Now the reason why this looks complicated is because it's not quite giving back the tile directly. It's actually going through a conversion table I put in place in case any of our sprite sheets change. I can easily just go to the tile and question and update its single reference number instead of updating every number at every instance it pops up in the socket. You may also notice that tile reference itself is an 8 long array of the same number. Well, this is temporary until we finish animations. Um, you see each tile has room for an 8 frame, or really however many frames we want animation cycle that pans through the map um, and I can show you that with if I change this water tile to let's say six and I run it you can see that just the water is updating that pink line that goes through the map So at this point, most of the bugs have been squashed, and there's plenty of room for adding more tiles as well. Um, and we'll probably do terrain swaps in the future, but uh, that's pretty much the majority of it. Hope to see you guys in the next video. I'll be covering the progress on this game in the future. Uh, do my best to <laughs> keep some sort of schedule. But uh, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out if you're interested in this game, and I'll see you later.